What were your early influences in music? What were you hearing as a child that kind of formed your taste? Well, I was born in 58. Um, so, you know, rock and roll was was coming in, but it was... It, there was still a lot of um, skiffle, right? That's what you were skiffle. Yeah, yeah. Skiffle was a big, big thing. I don't know um, what that is. Skiffle was like, um, like a nineteen fifties kind of punk musical. It was, it was, it was British teenagers mostly. There was a guy called Lonnie Donegan. He was the king of skiffle. Really, he was. I think he actually came from an Irish background, but um, he would take these songs like Rock Island Line or you know Lead Belly songs. And, uh, and it was very low budget. The Beatles were a skiffle group originally, and they often had like just a T-chest bass, you know, not even a real bass. Yeah, it's a rock and roll with an upright. Yeah. With, so like the early like Elvis rock, recording. Rockabilly-ish. Yeah, really. like rockabilly type stuff. And um, it was it was huge. It, it really took off in the, I guess, the mid-50s um, before people, had, you know, rock and roll was, I don't know, it was happening, but it hadn't really big in the UK to the same degree, I think. And there was more, people were more into uh, blues, actually. Blues and um, Sister Rosetta Tharp. And they were actually coming to the UK and they were gigging in the UK. So... um, And then Muddy Waters. Yeah, Muddy Waters. And there was a trumpet player who I knew in his old age, and my partner Annie played with, called Humphrey Littleton. Do you ever hear him? No, but it's a great name. It's a great name. (laughs) People just called him Hump, so I'll call him Hump. He died a few years ago, but Hump, um, he, he was a trumpet player. He'd been in the army during the war. Then he got um, demobilized, you know, and um, and it was the late 40s. And he he was really into like Louis Armstrong, but also the whole blues thing, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, it, it was an era of like, well, why not? You know, so there was this basement in Oxford Street in, in Soho in London and they called it the 100 Club. I mean, it was really just a basement. It was pretty kind of scuzzy in many ways. But there was a bar <laughs> and a little stage. And uh, he started putting on these shows in the 100 Club. And, and it took off, you know, and teenagers were coming. We're talking like late 40s, yeah. uh, early 50s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, you know, I talked to him about it. He said, oh, it was, it was really wild, you know, because people were like, the war's over, you know. Yeah. So they were drinking and they were taking all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and, then, and then he found like he could get... People like Big Joe Turner, you yeah. know, that they, that they, some of them were because of segregation were actually struggling a bit in the States. So you get these guys over and say, you know, just get, come over, I guess on a boat sometimes, not even a plane, and um, I'll get you a band and we'll, you know, we'll go on the road or whatever and we'll play at the 100 Club. So Humph was doing that and um, we, this was in the early 50s. And to some degree that became, that also fed into that skiffle thing because. As often with the Brits, they didn't quite know what they were doing because because there was wasn't really a tradition of jazz education or anything like that. So um, you know it was all a bit DIY, you know, and they were just kind of making stuff up. And um, I know Sister Rosetta came o- over, who was amazing. I mean, you're right, yeah, she's incredible. <clears throat> and um, yeah, not <clears throat> not really that much of a sister of Bible accounts, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but she was married to a preacher, wasn't she? And she was a gospel singer. And she was amazing. She played great guitar. So all that was happening. And um, what's where that? Where I'm going with this is that they were uh, the people, the kids that were seeing these kind of American blues artists in the fifties at places like the Hundred Club with Humph playing his trumpet. Amongst them were people like Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, <coughs> Jeff Beck. You know who later formed bands like the Yardbirds on and played in those places in and fact, all played with the yardbirds everybody right yeah, yeah of you course. know that clip of them playing that in the film blow up it's a great clip oh i don't know oh you got i to don't see know it. i mean i've read i've read um all of the stories about them growing up and yeah. every month getting these waiting for these albums to yeah. come out <clears throat> yeah and the stones of course as well so they were seeing these gigs and they were going this is great music but again like they didn't know quite how to do it because they they were not black you know but they loved it. But they loved it. Yeah. And then they just sort of, in a way, they sort of slightly twisted it around and then they re-imported it back into this country. And that's th- that was the Rolling Stones and the whole British thing. 
It was the British invasion by proxy of being the American reinvasion. It, it was really. They yeah. were just bringing the music back in, a, back, in a slightly yeah. different form, you know. And even the Beatles, you know, I mean, they were a rock and roll band at first. They, I know they, they went on the road with. They supported Little Richard in the UK <clears throat> in the early sixties, and they were playing mostly rock and roll covers. And and then, of course, the rest is history. But you know, and then. Yep. They, and they took acid and, you know, <laughs> and all bets were off, you know. But, yeah. but that's, yeah. And so, then after that, they all came back as jazz players? Is that what, <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I think Paul McCartney's got, I mean, he I always thought he was the most, probably the most musically skilled, right? The oh. video of him talking about how he came up with parts and he's singing all the parts. I forget yeah. what that's from. Yeah. That's amazing. You realize what you're, I, 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 you know, I always considered him astoundingly brilliant and just. Oh, uh, he's just, amazing. But when you see him actually just start singing the instrumental parts and saying which instrument it is. Yeah. And then singing that part, like the French horn. He's like, and then you could have French horn and he's singing it. it he's it's a, profound. He's a genius. Yeah. And he doesn't read music. As I, I think because I know a couple of guys that work with him and, you know, when he did those more symphonic pieces and so you get people to... Well, then I'm sorry, but where I teach, I'd have to fail him. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right? F. Right. Yeah. But, you know, he's just, he's just, <laughs> he's just exudes music. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He really does. And, and, yeah. and, and no matter what he does, just has that. Well, John too, though, was the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a slightly bluesier sort of sens sensibility, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Paul always had that. Is, is it, if I say music hall, does that mean anything to you? Sure. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I think he's, he had that music hall thing going on, which is also, I've gone way around the houses, but, you know, you <laughs> did say what were the early influences. So music hall was very big in England, you know, which was people singing kind of often quite comedic songs, you know, um, like a Beatles song, like your mother should know. Let's get all up and dance to a song. You know, that that's very sort of steeped in that old music hall tradition. There like show tunes and show tunes. Like but that. it was kind of slightly different to... Here in the US, it was much more about Broadway shows and it was more, it was sophisticated and it had a sort of jazzy thing, you know, Gershwin or, I mean, no, not all of it, but Cole Porter, it was quite sophisticated. It was less sophisticated. I think that's the Brit thing. Okay. It's like a little more kind of grainy and a bit more. And um, I can really hear that in the Beatles at times, you know, mm. and I grew up with that, you know, my mum and dad loved that stuff. My mum could sing a lot of those songs. My dad was, um, that's an early influence. My dad was a really keen amateur mu musician. He's been dead quite a few years now. They both have. But, you know, my one of my earliest memories was um, he, he played a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of things, some of them not very well. But, <laughs> but probably the best, he was probably best on the piano. And um, there was a movie theatre or cinema, as they would call them over there. Um, just up the road from my house. We were living in a little house. It was a terrace or, you know, semi-detached. Yeah, they call it there. So, you know, small house, you mm -hmm. know, not a big house. And um, and my dad in the 50s, he'd, um, he would have loved to be a musician, but he, it was after the war, he had to make some money and he he trained, he became, um, I guess you would call it, um, and he's like a surveyor, but it was like inspecting buildings, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, so... So he was always going around buildings and, and, and the movie theatre, they always had like a, sometimes an organ or at least a piano. And they'd had that since the 20s because of the silent. It's the so, silent movie, sure. So yeah. this movie theatre, he was doing some work there and they said, oh, we're getting rid of this piano. It was a grand piano, you know. And um, he was like, yeah, we'll have that, you know. So this, I, I think I was about four years old and this piano showed up. There's like three guys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you know, my mum's like looking, going, "Oh my god!" You know? <laughs> and it, it sort of came into the, the the front room, which was smaller than this room. I mean, you know, it was not a big room. Um, maybe it was ten by twelve or something, you know. And it was a big. That's big. It was either a ten foot. It might even been. I don't know. It was big. It was big, you know. And um, so this thing came in, and it, I'm, I'm just. It's one of those vivid memories. I remember my dad sitting down 
and he played some kind of boogie woogie stuff, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like four years old. I was like, what? This <laughs> this is, and he helped me. You know, he's like, do you want to have a go? And I'm, you know, like tiny little fingers, you know, but I managed to sort of do like the left hand thing. I was going like two fingers, uh-huh. and he he played along, and um, it's a really vivid memory. You know, and um, the piano didn't last that long, actually. It was, you know, it's chopped in for an upright, like not long after that. But it was, it was loud, you know, it was so loud, you know, a grand piano, a small room. Yeah. And the impression that that had on me, and maybe even the fact that I'm a bass player, because it was a low end thing, you know. But the thing is, we needed to have like a dining table and some chairs. You couldn't just leave the top down and, and put a, a, a tablecloth and a I, setting on it? I have it, no but... idea what conversations happened between my <laughs> mum and dad, but, you know, it, it went. And then and then an upright piano came, which actually his mum died around that time, and it was her old piano. She was also a piano player. so And um, and then that was, that was another memory of just hearing him pick out things by ear. He had great ears. Yeah. So, um, and I think it was Beach Boys, early Beach Boys. I was probably I get around or something even earlier than that. Just hearing him sit at the upright piano and I was, wow, that's amazing. He's playing that thing that's coming out of there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I guess by then I was like six, seven, and uh, I was like, I want to do that. You know, I want to do that. <laughs> but I didn't get a guitar until I was maybe ten or eleven. I had to save up my my pocket money. Call it that here, pocket. Money. Uh, if we had any money, we. <laughs> <laughs> we would probably call it that, yeah. Yeah, yeah pocket change, I think. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids had, you know, it's like, oh, here's your pocket money. And it was like, yeah, it wasn't much. You know? Yeah, now it's Apple Pay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so you got a shilling or two shillings. It went up, you know, it was it was graduated. As you got older, it's like, oh, next year I'll be I'll be eight and I'll get, a, I've got a raise, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now so we're anyway. doing some Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin. I saved it all up and I bought this Czechoslovakian acoustic guitar, which was just, it was awful, but it was, cheapest guitar in the shop uh-huh yeah the action was like this <laughs> you played slide then <laughs> and, and there you go and that was it i was i was up and running i had a guitar you know yeah you were yeah wow.